Good morning. Our opening hymn could be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, 689, 689, O Salutaris. Let us pray. 
O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. We live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to the people, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The people then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, many volumes of wisdom and words have been written and spoken over the millennia by great men and women. Some of us can quote these words right off the top of our heads. But the most memorable, most important, most powerful words that have ever been spoken or ever will be spoken was this. This is my body and this is my blood. Not a simple, not a facsimile, but this is my body, this is my blood. Spoken by Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and our God. Why not 2,000 years ago? These words have shaped lives and the spirituality of billions of human beings from Africa to Asia, from North America to Europe, South America, Australia, and all Oceania. Our feast today of Corpus Christi, or the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, is one that is approximately seven to eight hundred years old and a cornerstone, a cornerstone of Catholicism. On this feast, Catholics across the globe should reflect on their Catholicism, the Eucharist, the Mass, and the Blessed Sacrament. We hear today about three very fundamental mysteries of the Catholic faith, the real presence, Eucharist as unity for all humanity, and Eucharist as nourishment for the human soul. In the Gospel of St. John, the sixth chapter, he writes, guided by the Holy Spirit, on the real presence, anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. This is all written by St. John, said by the Lord Jesus Christ. From an early age as Catholics, this is a fundamental stone, cornerstone, so to speak. We know this, and without it, we have nothing. It offers us comfort, solace, and is truth seven times refined. Our whole life, from childhood to our golden years, the truth of the real presence and Holy Communion is always there with us and never goes away. We never have to worry come to church and very soon we'll be able to come to church together and worry about is Christ going to be there is Christ there regardless of the way we feel that particular day our mood our feelings how far we are are we are up on the ladder of holiness how deep our faith Christ is present he said so he promised it he is all powerful he is God this is what we talk about when we say and talk about the real presence. This is it. He will be there. He will be here. He is in every tabernacle, in every Catholic church, all the rites of the Catholic churches across the globe. Holy Communion, the Eucharist, draws us together. And this is what we hear today in the first letter of the Corinthians, the Greeks, by St. Paul. When we receive him in Holy Communion, we all receive the same Lord Jesus Christ. 
When I was at St. Michael's London, the pastor, Father Marie Sample, he had a wonderful tradition before Mass that he would sit there and go across the nave in each area asking people to put their hand up, to stand, and to tell everybody before Mass where they were from. On this one particular Sunday, then what he would do is he would hand out a prayer card of St. Michael, the St. Michael prayer on it for them, and welcome them. The congregation would welcome everyone, but he would ask them where they were from. And this particular Sunday was an interesting one. It came across my mind, I still have it in there. We saw a cross section of the universality of the Catholic Church present here in London, Ontario, at St. Michael's Church. Men and women, older and younger, healthy and ill, people from every continent, and I say every race, in the entire world. He stopped before welcoming them and looked back at me. I was up in the sanctuary and smiled. I couldn't stop smiling that day. And they all came up, we all came to receive the same Lord. Our Lord gives himself to his people, and while he was here, he walked with us. He talked with us, he ate with us, he spoke, and he gave himself to many and all who would follow him. The Eucharist is given to us to be food for the journey, to be received in a state of grace, to help strengthen us on earth by Adam. He comes to us as food and drink. The gift is the same, the gift doesn't change. That is, his whole self is given. The effects of reception, though, are different and very personal depending on the individual. It depends on our needs, and we all have different needs, and we're all at different stages in spiritual development, moving towards holiness, and this all strengthens the mystical body of Christ, which we are part of. Spiritual bond of Holy Communion, of spiritual communion, while being streamed, it binds us all, each and every one of us, together. In our first reading today, mentions the manna in the desert. This manna nourished the body. Holy Communion nourishes the soul. Holy Mass, our gathering in our church, and being streamed right now when we gather, reminds us of our identity as a Catholic Christian. We too, brothers and sisters, we too are walking through the desert of this mortal life to the promised land of heaven. Just like the ancient Israelites walked through the desert from Egypt to Israel, we are doing this also towards heaven. At Mass, we learn of the Catholic Christian life. We receive grace from God. We hear of the promises to us that He made of future glory. Christ shows us His charity, His love, and says, Now, in turn, I want you and I expect you to show that same charity I have shown you to your brothers and your sisters. Here, brothers and sisters, he says, is your dignity, your mission, and here is your unity, and I will be your head. Today's feast is a reaffirmation of the Catholic Christian faith and belief in the real presence that we receive. How deep, brothers and sisters, is our belief in this mystery? What we profess here do we show in our actions out there? Everything on how we live, how we talk, when we're at Mass, when we receive communion reverently, speaks volumes on our belief in the real presence. His passion, His resurrection, His all His promises to us, His teachings are all enveloped in Holy Communion. Binds us all together. Stay close to the church. Stay close to Mass, even if it's streamed, and you will not be far from the Lord. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I in him.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ our Lord gives us his body and blood as real food and real drink, so that we may draw life from him. As one Eucharistic community, we bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For our popes, bishops, and priests, that they may offer this holy sacrifice with reverent devotion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For human society in our world today, that the social meaning of the Eucharist may inspire people to serve Christ in the poor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper devotion to Jesus really present in the Eucharist, that privately or in community, men, women, and children may come to adore him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves at this altar, that we may truly form a single body as we share in Christ, the living bread from heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those nourished in this life by the Eucharist, that they may be raised up on the last day, especially deceased members of St. John the Divine Parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, be favorable to the prayers we offer. Accept them in union with the perfect prayer of your beloved Son, the one acceptable victim and eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For in the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we hear present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, 
nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Church on earth, 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your home. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow all the world, all that is good.
is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Reminder, brothers and sisters, that here at St. John the Divine, we will be opening on the 27th and the 28th at 30% capacity with restrictions in place. And we'll go over that. You'll hear about it in the very near future. Please call the office this week if you have any questions. I'm also taking confessions starting on Wednesday, the 17th. Call the office, get a hold of myself, and we'll set up a time for you to come in. Social distancing will be in effect. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go with the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh, oh, oh.